Hi, this is Dr. Lou Jacobs at Jacobs Chiropractic Acupuncture Center in Portland, Maine, and I am here with Dr. Aaron Vela, videography, videographer and chiropractor, and we are going to talk to you tonight about trigger points, knots that form in your muscles in the back of your neck, the base of your skull and your shoulders and your glutes that can cause real pain. We're gonna describe what they are and how to deal with them at home with household items. A trigger point is an area of muscle, usually in the middle of the muscle, what's called the muscle belly, that is under a lot of repetitive stress. And if you can imagine the stress of rubbing your fingers together, I want you to start rubbing your fingers together, not super, you don't have to squeeze them too hard together, but enough that you feel it, and rub them and rub them and rub them. What happens in a muscle, let's say if you're lifting something all day long or you're mousing all day long, there's friction in the muscle that leads to irritation and inflammation and even adhesions in the fibers of the muscle. And just like your fingers should be getting warm, the muscle will become inflamed and knotted up. It accumulates things like histamines, like when you get a cold and your nose is sore because it's so inflamed, the histamines that you take an antihistamine medication for to reduce the swelling in your nose, those same chemicals end up in these knots of your arms, among others, and create sensitivity, just like with your nose, and inflammation. So one of the things that you can do to take care of these knots, and mind you, I'll tell you some of the conditions that can be caused by these knots in just a minute. We're gonna start, number one is gonna be starting up here at the base of the neck and in the neck. Knots accumulate here very easily from looking down at phones, from looking at computers, from doing any kind of desk work. If you're a desk jockey with a head that's tipped forward, it creates strain in these muscles repeatedly over time, and you get that inflammation and you get that friction and you get that tension that leads to the knotted muscle, okay? So when there's knots up in through here at the base of your skull, what will often materialize are things like tension headaches that radiate up over the top of your head and into your forehead. You can get neck pain from the tension in these knots in the muscles of your neck. You can have radiating pain that will come around to your jaw from trigger points that exist back here. And because of the way that these muscles attach up here and run down to your shoulders and then down through the mid back, you can actually have pain in your shoulders that will stem from up here. So how do you deal with these knots? There's a number of different ways to address them. All you need to do is grab something that is firm, like this jar of capers here, and you can work on those knots. Now it's sometimes difficult to reach around here like this, but even this is okay, as long as your shoulder moves the way that it should, you should be able to get back here and you'll feel like this deep, achy sensation, which I'm feeling right here, okay? This deep, achy, not really painful, but certainly uncomfortable tension. And I'm just rolling gently with the jar of capers over that knot, almost like a massage. Not pushing too hard, but enough so that I can feel it. And you can do this for 30 seconds and take a little break. Maybe do the other side if the other side is tight and has knots in it over here. You'll feel the knot. I mean, you felt them before. You'll feel the upper part of your trap here and you'll feel like a little ball. They're usually, I don't know, less than an inch in diameter or an inch wide, um, but it's a noticeable bump that you'll almost strum like a string um, or like a little ball underneath the skin. You'll feel a little thump over it, okay? And that's the area that you wanna hit. But it's not always that simple. So let's say you have tension headaches that are manifesting in your forehead or back here at the base of the skull. Yes, working these trigger points in the mid part of your neck will be helpful, but that's not enough to do the entire job. You may need to go a little bit further and work, I'm gonna use a rolling pin for this part, right? You may need to get up in at the base of the skull 
and apply pressure up there. It's real easy to do. You hold it like this and you push. Right? You don't want to strain your shoulder doing the trigger point work on your neck. So you've got to be a little bit careful and find a tool that works, but this works great. So right now it's at the base of my skull and I can feel it. I can roll up and down a little bit if I want to, or I can just dig right in. So not only am I hitting here for the headaches, but I'm hitting up here as well. Now guess what? This muscle runs down to the shoulder. Hitting here on the top of the trap will also help with here, here, and then the pain that radiates up into your forehead or resides back here. Well, how do you get this area? Well, you can get it, you can use the rolling pin for this too. You can lean it up against the wall and pull down just like this and bang, you're hitting the trigger points in the upper traps with the rolling pin just like this. And you might even feel this radiate up into your head. If you're working on a trigger point at the base of your skull or in your neck or in your upper trap, for your headaches and it brings on a headache, that's usually a pretty good sign that the headaches are tension headaches being caused by the knots in your neck. So that's enough for the neck area. You can also, you know, you can, it's almost enough for the neck area. You can do other stuff like you can lie down on the floor, you can take a skateboard and you can make sure that you know where the wheel is. And you can do this with the jar of capers too and just lean back on the wheel like this and just dig it in right at the base of the skull. This takes almost no effort at all, but it really hits the spot. It's a little bit softer than the rolling pin or the capers, and uh, it'll do the trick. And you can hit your upper shoulders too with this. Skateboards are really good for this. And there's a little bit of give too, so you're less likely to overdo it. All right. That region causes a lot of problems for people because of the way that we work these days at computers and at desks, and we're looking down at our kids, and everything that we do is sort of down like this. Um, that area, like I said before, will create problems that will travel down a little bit further into the mid, back, and shoulders, and this is area number two. So area number one is up in the neck and base of the skull. Area number two is upper traps and down into these muscles here called the rhomboid muscles and specifically this one's a doozy this muscle right here that lifts up your shoulder blade called the levator scapula muscle right here you'll find the inside corner upper corner on the inside of the shoulder blade and right there there's usually a knot and that's the levator scap muscle okay well how do you hit that the best way to hit that, really, if you're not gonna lie on the floor and dig in, you've got two decent options. The first option is leaning against the door jam. So you can go like this and lean back into the upper inside corner of your shoulder blade and you'll hit that muscle. And if you just move a tiny bit off to the move a tiny bit more towards the inside, towards the spine, you'll be hitting these rhomboid muscles that run right in through here. They're all pretty intimately connected and collectively will conspire to cause shoulder and upper back pain. The next most effective way to hit that area, I would say, is to use some kind of hook device that you can wrap over your shoulder and have it dig in here and dig in here. So I've got a guitar here and this will work just fine. I'm gonna put it over my shoulder and I'm gonna pull forward like this. And it's gonna dig right into that levator scapula muscle. If I lower it down a little bit, it's gonna dig right into the rhomboids. And you'll find the knot because one, you feel it already, but it'll be especially achy and you might even put pressure on it and you'll slip off of the knot and you'll feel a little thud, and that's a good way to identify that you're on the right spot too. Pushing down in those muscle areas, uh, in those muscles in that area, may also radiate up into your neck. The last one, which you can also use some kind of hook device or a ball or the uh, door jam, is out here, sort of at the, at the, at the corner where your arm 
sort of meets your shoulder. So it's this muscle right here, and it's sore in a lot of people, especially if you're mousing all day. And you can use a hook of any kind to hit that terrace muscle. Some of these muscles are muscles of the rotator cuff, and they're really easily aggravated. There's a lot of movement. Anytime you move your arms, you're, hitting the, you're moving that area and causing repetitive stress. If you play basketball, repetitive stress, very repetitive. If you're mousing and you're moving your arm like this, it's very, very repetitive. Playing an instrument, you're moving your arm. It's very, very repetitive. So you want to get in there and essentially what's happening with these trigger points when you're putting pressure on them is you're squeezing them like a sponge and you're forcing the muscle fibers to sort of relax while simultaneously squeezing out some of that inflammatory gunk that was in there, like the histamines that we talked about that reside in your nose when you have a cold. And then on top of that, the pressure is also stimulating blood flow. So the blood comes in and it goes into the muscle that needs healing and needs refreshing of sorts. It picks, the blood picks up some of that inflammatory soup that's in there and it carries it away and then it allows for the muscle to relax and heal a little bit better. Inflammation is a good thing if it lasts for a day or two, but most of us have chronic inflammation, especially in those knots, from repetitive stress, repetitive stress, repetitive stress. That's when the chemicals that create inflammation become harmful. So it's really valuable to use trigger point therapy, work on these pressure points and knots, to stimulate the blood flow to come in and carry out some of that inflammatory waste that's in there. Okay, the last area that we're gonna cover tonight, because this is one of the three most commons, is down here in the glutes. When there's trigger points in and around the pelvis and in the glutes and in the hips, those trigger points can cause enough pressure on the sciatic nerve to cause symptoms down the leg and it can be really scary in that you think that you have a much more serious problem that, than you do. You might have sciatica, but you could also have tension down here. There's a syndrome called piriformis syndrome that some people poo poo, but it, it's written up in books and journals. And, and if you get a trigger point in that piriformis muscle down here, the way that that muscle runs across the sciatic nerve, it's perfectly positioned to put pressure on that nerve so that you will have symptoms right down the back of your leg, just like a sciatica that would be coming from a herniated disc in your low back. So this is a really great one. So for this one, again, I'm gonna pull out a handful of my tools. You can use the jar of capers still from the kitchen, okay? And to do that, you wanna make sure though, that the glass is thick enough that when you sit on it, it doesn't break. It might be wiser to use a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. So I'm going to take this jar of capers, I'm going to put it on the floor, and I'm going to lean on it like this. I'm going to use my arms to stabilize myself. I'm going to put that leg straight out, and I'm going to find the achy sore spot, and I'm going to let it dig in, just like that. And you just sit there for 30 seconds, let it ache a little bit, Try to relax on it as much as you can. If you're fighting it, if you're really tensing up, you're not gonna get the effects that you want. So loosen up the glutes, sit on that jar of capers or lacrosse ball, give it 30 seconds, take a break for 10 seconds, do another 30, take another break, do another 30, call it good. A total of a couple minutes worth of pressure on there ought to be enough. You can do the same thing with a mixing bowl. You can do the same thing with your rolling pin. With the rolling pin, it'll be a little bit easier to roll, to roll on it. You can go like this. You can roll up and down. If you've got pain and tension and knots out here, you can use that rolling pin to roll up and down the leg. These are really, really great tools for working your legs. Any kind of tension, whether there's knots there or not, you can roll out like this. You can roll out your calves if your calves are tight after a bike ride. With minimal effort, this is one of the most solid tools in your kitchen or in your house to work on these problems. You can also, the last thing that I often recommend for this area down here is just finding the arm of a couch. 
and you just sit down on the arm of the couch on the edge. I can try it over here on this chair. Essentially, just like this, you go to the corner of the chair and you sit back on it just like that and you just hold it. That way you don't have to get all the way down on the ground. It's really, really easy. Um, and you'll feel these knots dissipate and almost melt away um, as you sit on them. And if it feels bruised or if it starts to feel bruised at any time, you stop and you ask somebody that knows what they're talking about, whether or not that's good, bad, whether you should stop or keep going. But normally you would wanna stop if it feels like somebody has come up and punched you and, and it feels bruised. That's the time to take a break for a couple days until it feels less bruised. And then you can start back up again. You'll notice that with these different areas, I worked on different muscles. And whether you have a trigger point in your terrace muscle here, your levator scap here, your rhomboids here, your traps here, it's a good idea to work all of those points. All of these points are strategically positioned from a trigger point therapy standpoint to help the other guys out. So if this is your worst spot and you do these areas too, this area will get better a little bit quicker. All of this tension, that these knots are producing are pulling things in all different directions and creating a larger space of inflamed tissue that you don't want. So down here in the glutes, you know, if you're hitting that piriformis muscle, you also want to hit your glute maximus, your glute medius, and your glute minimus, and maybe even roll out the hips a little bit to get the best possible effect in that piriformis muscle. Up here at the base of the skull, for those tension headaches, maybe even numbness and tingling into the arms, same with the shoulders. Tension there can cause that as well. Um, up here, you wanna hit here, you wanna hit here, you wanna hit down here. You may even wanna do a little bit of work with your fingers on the sides of your neck. Here are these sternocleidomastoid muscles that run down like this and attach to your clavicle. Sometimes if you're working on the shoulders, you wanna hit your pectoral muscles up here, right underneath your collarbone. Right? because loosening this up will allow for your shoulders to come back and it will help this area back here. So don't neglect the surrounding muscles. If you feel knots there, it's safe to go ahead and apply a little pressure. It's really hard to hurt yourself doing this. If it feels wrong, it probably is, but otherwise you should be good to go. If you have any questions about trigger points and how to deal with them and the conditions that they might cause, be it a headache, be it numbness or tingling in the arms, sciatica-like pain down the leg, post your questions below and we will get back to you as soon as possible with the best possible answer that we can. Again, this is Dr. Lou Jacobs and Dr. Aaron Vella, Jacobs Chiropractic Acupuncture Center in Portland, Maine. Be sure to check out some of our other videos on similar topics. We have lots of do it at home, DIY, neuromusculoskeletal solutions for you for all things nerve muscles bones joints you can find it on our website right here where you're at watching this one we'll see you later